This show is supported directly by listeners just like you. If you'd like to help out, visit AskBillAndDan.com for more details. Welcome to Ask Bill and Dan, the call-in show that aims to answer your questions about cameras, computers, and just about everything in between. Here are your hosts, Bill Wadman and Dan Gottesman. How are we doing today, my friend? We are uh, doing okay, I think. You all right on your end? Uh, everything is good. I am looking forward to helping some folks out, answering some questions, and seeing where things go. Who yeah. do we got? Uh, who do we got up first? Uh, I think we're starting uh, with uh, Jason uh, asking us about tethering, which is uh, something I think you and I have a little experience with. So let's Absolutely. see what he has to say. Nice. Uh, how you doing, Jason? Doing well. How about you guys? I think we're all right. You all right, Dan? Doing all right. Uh, so I wanted to ask a question about tethering specifically, and this is pretty pertinent because I just had a job where this kind of came up. And what I was doing was a a club volleyball team shoot that included kind of team shots and also individual kind of stylized stuff. And I thought, you know, maybe it'd be beneficial to have something tethered here. So not only I could check my own work, but also kind of show I got a lot of people asking me, hey, can I see the picture real quick? Do you mind? Um, so I had a few questions on that, though. Um and, you know, as you're shooting and doing these portraits of people, do you guys kind of feel like tethering is, is a good thing or a bad thing in terms of slowing down the process? People saying, oh, you know, I don't like that. Can you can we switch sides? Can we do this, that and kind of doing multiple reshoots? Um, another concern I have is, you know, I've got two stations, one team area on one side of the gym, individual shots on the other. So if I'm if I'm using a laptop, I, I imagine that's just really tough to transport I don't know how to use a tablet. Can you use a tablet? Um, and th- like in that vein, what's the go-to setup for you guys? I know there's a lot of ways to do it, and I think we all use Lightroom, so that would help. And then yeah. the last thing for me is I don't, I don't really know if this affects performance. Both, you know, if I snap a shot tethered, is it going to show up pretty quickly, or is there a lag? And then does that ruin or mess with the buffering of my camera to the memory card? So wow, those these of- are all good questions. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. This yeah. Is- it's a big one. All right, where do you want to start, Dan? Well, um, let's see. So let let's start specific to your situation. So you're 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 photographing uh, a bunch of people. You said this is like a, a volleyball team, right? Yeah, let's call it several teams too. So it's probably like 150 people. Okay, and and the average shot is going. These are all going to be group shots, right? You said, or are you doing some a bunch of group shots, and then there's also individuals as well, right? Right. So you're. Th- I'm thinking no more than a minute on each individual shot, and maybe five minutes for the team shot just to make sure I get it right. Right. So now for consistency's sake, if this, if this were me, if we were, if we were just sort of, you know, pre-planning here, my initial approach would be to do a sort of uh, mini studio setup where I would probably lock everything down. I would lock the camera. I'd get a tripod, lock the camera down. I get my lights all dialed in. And um, that then the next big question, like you, like you're asking is, is to tether or not to tether. Um, when you're shooting lockdown in a situation like that, where everything is under your control, um, you, you, you know, you can make arguments in either direction. Um, because once, once you get everything looking the way you want it to look, you don't necessarily need to tether, uh, because every, you know, your lights aren't changing. You're, you're basically just swapping subjects in and out. Um, yeah. Uh, and, and again, there, you know, there's an argument to be made where the less stuff you bring and the less stuff you use the, you know the easier yeah. things will be, yeah. the less things that can fail. Yeah, the less complicated, the better in a lot of situations. Uh, Dan and I were working on a project. Uh, Dan was teching me on a, on a shoot a few months ago, and we ended up tethering to his laptop. And, it, and it's great because you can have an art director there looking at what you're working on as you're working on it and saying, oh, that looks great. And you can also trust a computer screen in, say, Capture One or Lightroom a lot more than you can trust the back of the camera. Because you can right. you can go in there and open up the shadows or pull down the highlights and see if you actually have the information you think you have. This is true. Um, there's a double edged sword to that though, because not only does it add complexity, and then you tend to be looking at the pictures on the camera instead of just kind of taking pictures. But there's also you have to trust the client enough so that they it doesn't end up being a detriment to the shoot. You know, where oh let me see those pictures. Oh let me see that. Let me t- let's let's nitpick every single little detail that really doesn't need to be nitpick right now because that's stuff that's dealt with in post and that kind of thing. 
Yeah, um, and inevitably I'm getting into the raw versus unfinished conversation where like exactly. this, isn't, this right. isn't the done photo. So if you have people you know who you can trust who can say, oh, yeah, 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 now I see how you have it. Okay, that's good. You know, her eyes aren't closed and and I think that it's a good smile on her face. Away in th- The kind of things you can't really see on the back of a camera easily. Um, right. Then that can be great. But if you have nitpicky clients, I say <laughs> keep them in the dark as long as possible for, for that kind of stuff. So I don't know. Is that, is that something you were about to say? Yeah, I, I would tend to agree with that. Um, the the benefits of tethering are that you can see like like what what Bill just said you can definitely get a much clearer look at what you uh, at what you're shooting you can check your focus uh, way better than you can on the back of a camera uh, you can also with um, depending on the software that you're using you can also immediately apply a look a profile yeah. uh, to to the shot to to get a closer to get it looking a little closer to what you might do with it in yeah. post which is kind of nice in certain situations and more specifically. If you are working with a client or an art director or someone who is ultimately going to make a call about whether or not this is working or not, uh, that can save a ton of time. Because if, if the person who's making, you know, if the person who's paying the bill, so to speak, if, yeah. the, if the boss is if right over your off, shoulder, they sign off on exactly, it. Exactly. They yeah. were right there. You saw it come in. We talked about it. You you proved it. Yeah. Good to go. And, yeah. and that, that can save a ton of time. Yeah. Um, now, on the flip side, like you like you alluded to in your in your question, um, when it comes to can I see the can I see what it looks like I am a I, I try to avoid that at all costs yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I don't I, I mean something um, when you're shooting tethered in the studio and you're shooting um, and, and the model can see you know the person that you're shooting can see the screen yeah. that is a, a, a just a weird massive yeah. waste of time the, for the you know, client yeah. if, if the client is the subject that gets messier if the client is a third party who actually has a head on their shoulders and they're making decisions that could be a little bit easier but even then, I mean, you 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 mentioned about the tablet. As far as I know, mm. there's no tablet only tethering solutions, right? But there are like you can ha- be tethered to say capture one on your laptop, and then mm-hmm. there's a what's the little free thing that's on the like, the iPad? It's called Capture Pilot. Capture Pilot, which so right. basically, you know, they could be tethering, and the client could be sitting thirty feet away with the iPad in their hands, looking at all the pictures as they come up in say a commercial or a advertising shoot where there's, you know, time is on the line and things are really expensive and we need to make sure we got it. Yeah. Uh, regarding speed, uh, you're not going to ever be faster than shooting directly to cards on your camera. <laughs> yeah. um, it's slower than that. Yeah. Uh, so if, if time is an issue and, and you do need to get an, a certain amount of shots in a certain amount of time, yeah. uh, shooting straight to cards uh, is going to be, a much faster. The pictures solution. do not show up on the screen instantaneously. It takes a few seconds, a lot of times. Absolutely. And, and, yeah. um, and I've also been in situations where when tethering, uh, the camera sometimes records to the internal cards or sometimes doesn't record to the internal cards. I personally would like it to do both. Like I want to be on the computer and that's great, but I don't also want to trust the computer as my only copy of those images. Yeah. Um, M- that most, makes me nervous too. Most systems do not do that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so th- I mean, th- there's those kinds of things too. Um, there's, yeah, tethering is one of those, like really it's, it's, it's fascinating. It's incredibly useful, but it's also, it adds a lot of complexity. There's also the question of when you're plugged into the, uh, uh the camera, the USB connection, well, it's a USB, it's a micro USB or mini USB, um, or even firewire. And it's like those connections can come loose and the cabling is bad. And, oh, the capture one or Lightroom and the camera get disconnected or start getting wonky and you got to turn them off and on and unplug and replug. And, it's, you know, yeah, like there's all those kinds of things, which if you're in the middle of a shoot, it's like, I just want to shoot. I don't want right. to have to deal with this stuff. Yeah. As, as, as I mentioned in my opening statement, uh, the, the more things you add, the more things that can go wrong. Um, yeah. So, so kind of coming full circle uh, in in this volleyball team scenario, my sort of my gut inclination would be to forego tethering and to do straight to cards. I would keep my computer. I would bring my computer with me. I would have it ready, and I would upload my cards and do a quick check periodically, maybe like in between or you know at a natural break or whatever, just before, before I break all my stuff down, just to make sure yeah. that everything looks good. But um, with, with, you know, a step and repeat sort of situation yeah. like you're talking about where everybody's basically getting the same exact position, same exact, you know, it's just group shots and, you know, one up shots. Uh, I don't think it makes a ton of sense yeah. to, to do the tethering thing. If you can have somebody else too teching for you so they're so you know that uh, they're dealing with that while you're shooting, that's also a different situation. That, that's actually a, a really good point that Bill brings up um, this. You know, we're, we're just assuming here that you're doing this all by yourself. Uh, if you have the budget to hire a second pair of hands, that changes a lot of things. Uh, that gives yeah. you a little bit more freedom to bring more stuff, to have another a whole another setup like you were talking about. You can have two things going on. Um, if you have someone who can keep an eye on 
the computer, uh, that definitely makes it a lot more, um, you know. You know, uh, as the as the uh, resident Nikon guy, Dan. Yeah. Um, the the eight hundred and the D four have Ethernet. Is that true? No. The the D four the D four S. Oh, the D and D four S. So yeah. the eight hundreds don't have Ethernet. Correct. Um, but there is a way to set that up as like a tethering solution as well. It's kind of it, it could dump them onto the computer in a certain folder, and you could have a watch the, the folder way, set up. It's actually believe it or not, it actually does it via FTP. Yeah. Okay. So okay. you can yeah. basically, if you wanted to set wow. up an FTP uh, server on yeah. your computer, the camera will be, is, a, is basically an FTP client that yeah. will upload the Straight files to a folder. via FTP to now a folder. We're talking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, and that's so I, actually, I already have a server. Now all I need is the uh, $5,500 yeah. to come up with the new D5 and just buy that. Thing. Exactly. <laughs> well, yeah. but then that, that that's just dumping them in a folder. You still yeah. need to do something. Then you have a watch. Then you can have a the yeah, thing you watched, set up a watch folder. folder. And, uh, the, yeah. I mean, and there's also, um, there are Wi Fi tethering solutions, which is, is, is ultimately probably the future. Um, but it hasn't really gotten there yet, and it's a little right slow now, and don't complicated. Don't you feel like that's a little? Yeah, I, I think I, like the I wouldn't go there part. now, but like I would hope in three to five years that is the answer to all the tethering. The things are problems. definitely moving in that direction. Yeah. The one thing that's that sort of complicates that is at, as as our sensors get bigger and as our files get bigger, you yeah. know, there's only so much speed that we can squeeze out of wireless. Yeah. yeah. Um. So it's going to be an interesting compromise. Yeah. Is that uh? How's how's that for you? Yeah, I, I, that's perfect. I mean, who knew? this much went into tethering. I, I think you're right. I agree that when it's kind of a setup once and sort of forget it, same position, yeah. it probably doesn't make sense. I could see like Bill, you're doing some kind of ad shot and the director's yeah. right there. That makes, but when you're doing 150 turn and burn, it's for, probably not the best. It's, bet. it's not. Although I will say that on the shoot that I referenced before, we actually were doing a composite on the cover because it was like a fold out cover. And we were taking two shots where left shot we had kind of set up and we had to have the right shot match in such a way that I could do the composite later. And at least in capture one, and there's probably a way to do it in Lightroom too. You could have one picture up on the left-hand side and then the right-hand picture just kept coming up with the latest shot that came off the camera. And it was really useful to make sure that the lighting matched and, you know, that it was going to work in the end, you know? Um, yeah. So there, there are advantages to doing it. It's just that it is, it adds a lot of complexity and it's a little bit of pain in the butt. Yeah. And the, the other, the other thing is uh, the camera system that you're using speaks a lot to that. If you're yeah. shooting with uh, a medium format digital system, uh, especially an older one where the on screen, yeah. you know, the camera, the, the digital backs screen. Some is of the really tiny. old ones only tether. <laughs> well, the really, really old ones. Yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, your options are even more limited and, and you actually really do benefit greatly from being able to see the image on a computer screen, yeah. uh, that, that factors in as well. Yeah. Got it. Thanks so well, much, yeah, that's, Jason. That's great. Yeah. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. All right. We'll talk to you soon. Take cool. care. That whole tethering game is, 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 is a neat little trick, but not always necessary. You know, it's like just one of those things. It's true. Uh, it's like any, like any tool, you know, uh, I love having all these great tools, but, uh, it doesn't mean that, yeah. I, you know, get to use them every single time. Right you know? tool it's... for the right job. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> uh, speaking of right tool for the right job, uh, mm. we got Aaron on the line who is going to ask us something about, I think he wants to, he wants a lighting kit that he can use with video and with photo. So mm. mm -hmm. uh, kind of going different ways there. How you doing, Aaron? I'm doing quite well in yourself. Uh, we are, uh, we're doing delightful. I yes. think it's right happy new year. Yeah. Happy new year. Um, what, what, what do you got for us? What's your, what's your question? Well, I'm in the market for a new light kit. Um, I have been a videographer for many years, and I've been dabbling in photo more and more as time <clears> progresses. <throat> um, so I'm ideally looking for a light kit that I can both use for studio video as well as studio photo. Uh, and I have a couple particular things that I would like to be able to utilize, but I don't know enough about the actual tech to know what's going to be best for me. Hmm. Okay. Do you get, do you know how well, – you have a budget too, don't you? Did you mention you had a budget? I I do indeed. I have been, uh, through the holiday help, I've been offered a series of uh, funds to kind of help put it together. I'd like to keep my entire kit as under $700. That's my go-to goal, but it okay. is a little bit flexible. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, and do you know how many lights you need? Like, um... I would ideally like to be able to do a nice three-point light setup for myself, so okay. if three is possible, though I'm with the limited funding goal, I'm guessing that's going to be a little bit more on the problematic side. Yeah, I wonder so if you wouldn't be better... Minutes. Yeah, buying two two good ones and a reflector to start, maybe, or something like that. I, uh, I think that's a great idea. Yeah. Okay. What do you think, Dan? Well, all right. So my first question to you is, uh, what sort of camera are you going to be shooting with? All right. Well, with my video camera, I have the uh, Sony 4K. Um, oh, I should have actually thought to 
copy down the model number. Uh, it's recent, though. Is right? it a new one? It's, it's one of the it is. alpha. It's only released this past year. Okay. Um, and one of the primary things with the camera is it has the capabilities to shoot up to 980 frames per second. <laughs> So I noticed with a lot of lighting, when you get to that high a frame rate, sure. you notice an intensive flicker. Yeah, and I've well. been told some lights, like LED versus fluorescence, will have various forms of flicker. Mm -hmm. And so ideally, I'd want one that could at least give me as much leeway so I have to do as little in post as possible. Mm. That uh, being uh, said, sorry, go ahead. No, 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 you could finish your thought. I was going to say, that being said, with the amount of time that I'm using 980 frames per second, I'm more likely going to use the sunlight just to go ahead and bypass any of that yeah, studio. Yeah, sure. So, so that is that a, a Sony FS700 you're shooting with? I believe it is. It might possibly be the 2100. Uh, okay. Some reason that pops up into my head, but also that could be completely incorrect as well. Uh, so so and that, that's your video camera. And then that's my video. And then your stills camera is, is what? I actually just upgraded to the 7D Mark II. Oh, okay. okay. Great. It's it's an interesting thing. Uh, you, I know you were you mentioned uh, when you first got a hold of us that you were looking into LEDs, and yeah. the, my thing with LEDs is that while the 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 prices have been coming down and the tech has been getting better and more rugged and and whatnot, that there's still like a color balance thing that they never quite look as nice and natural as a good tungsten or a, or a daylight strobe would look. Mm. Um, yeah, it's, it's almost like they're missing frequencies in there, you know, they, they, there's a, there's a, a couple of buzzwords that get thrown in with regards to the quality of light. One of the big ones, especially with LEDs is this thing uh, called uh, the CRI, the right. color rendering. You want to get closer to a hundred, right? Is that right. What the, yeah. the problem is um, it, it's, it's not very, uh, it's not a great scale. It's not, it's not giving you good information. There, you know, there's a there's a really awesome web page, and I should, you know, we should put this in show notes, and maybe we'll pause, you know, yeah. here in the recording. But there's this really fantastic um, list that this fellow who used to work for the BBC as like a, you know, one of their head engineers, and he took it upon himself to create this new standard for for determining the quality. Of lights, oh, okay. and he updates it pretty regularly, especially so he with goes all these and new he'll things. buy these new things and test them, and out. he tests them out, and then okay. he makes this list, which is yeah. publicly available for free, uh, and then you could look up the, you know, that particular fixture or that particular product. Uh, but it does scale largely with with money on the LED end of things, right? Like the be the the more the more money you're spending, the better the light looks. Generally speaking, yeah, um, yeah. If if seven hundred dollars is your total budget, two total lights. <laughs> well, yeah, that's the thing, man. If if you're so so, here's here's the the interesting uh, thing to consider. Uh, technically speaking, if you have enough light to shoot uh, video, to shoot moving images, you technically should have enough light to shoot still images sure. as well. Um, but the the there is a distinct difference in the look and feel uh, of a of a strobe. You know, a proper yeah. studio strobe versus a hot light, right? And that that kind of comes down to you know, it's basically your creative choice. Mm -hmm. uh, I I know there are lots of. I mean, in the old days, uh, there were you know guys who shot on big film that preferred movie style you know hot lights. Sure, Karsh uh, was a big user of yeah, of and, hot and, lights, and, yeah. and and it's a it's a really dis distinct specific look. Uh, and now it's interesting now because the uh, the the newer cameras uh, have more sensitive sensors. So now shooting at ISO 800 or ISO 1600, yeah, not you know, a big deal. Four years ago, five years ago, you were pushing it. Uh, now with these new the little Sony's, the little yep. uh, you know those the A7s, uh, those are fantastic, and you can get away with a lot less light uh, and and get a, a, a different look. Yeah. So so th you know you got to ask yourself what what kind of look are you going after? If you now if you want to go the the strobe. Route. Well, he um, can't because he wants to do the video. He needs a whole other set. So, so that's the that was the next question. So you, you you're looking for a, a kit that you can do both with. Is that correct? Uh, essentially, yes. Also, by having one kit for both, I would also be able to possibly extend the budget up from <clears throat> seven hundred to even closer to a thousand, since I wouldn't need independent equipment for both photo and video. Yeah. Okay. So the so with with that kind of a a budget, uh, one of the first very first pieces of advice I would give you is to uh, start looking at used equipment. And this is something I do myself. Um, you can you can save a, a pretty good amount of money, at least 10, sometimes as much as 20% uh, on, on, on used stuff. And what's kind of nice is that 
this uh, lighting technology right now, we're experiencing a really high turnover and there's a lot of really cool new products coming out year after year. So people are going to be way more inclined to sell off their stuff uh, when the next cool thing comes out. Yeah. Uh, so you, you, you stand to, to pick so up a So you're thinking like deal. an old classic thing to, to, to get, get like a good, maybe a, year, a few years old classic kit right. versus trying to buy something new. Right. Um, yeah. I mean, my, the go to lights uh, that I uh, I think look fantastic and uh, are built like tanks uh, are the little Aries. The yep. Ari, um, if you can get your hands on an Ari 650 yeah. uh, or something in, in that. Pretty big and heavy, though. No, I mean, they're not that big and heavy. Are I you mean, planning on moving this stuff to locations there? Uh, I currently do have a nice makeshift setup uh, in my own space, but as you know, I am more in the bowels of Brooklyn. The majority of the clientele I'm working with are shows that are in Manhattan. Yeah. So I am a rather large and strapping gentleman, so I can carry a certain <laughs> okay. amount of weight on my own. So uh, so Ari, are you familiar with them, A-R-R-I? I am, actually. So yeah, Ari has a pretty great little three-light kit that I've seen. You know, I'm sure you've seen it, too. It comes in a um, one of those sort of uh, silverish, grayish uh, flight case style. Uh, case and it has a bunch of cables and you know it's three hot lights there's usually uh, three um, lights and there's different configurations of it um, oh you have it up there what's yeah what's they go it? for about two grand though they're a lot of money that's I mean, brand could, new yeah you could probably find a used one is what you're that's saying that's what I'm saying so if you and and you know you're, you're seeing guys uh, move away from those and to th these newer higher tech LED based systems ah, I see Good so idea. I'm saying yeah so you can get I mean and, and what's lovely about these these then lights then you wouldn't have a problem with the flicker either because these are tungsten exactly and they're built like tanks um, you know they're really easy to maintain and Aaron and, is strapping and, and they and they really do look lovely they're really I mean they're they're great great looking yeah. lights uh, the downsides are like like Bill had mentioned they are a lot bigger and heavier than an LED uh, they use and, a lot of juice and, and a lot that's, of heat that's the other thing they're also you, you got to be a lot more uh, aware of your electricity usage because they do pull way more current than their LED Are these dimmable? They are not. They are not. So they're either on or off. It's all, that's there why you have to use scrims. There are a lot yeah. of advantages to the to, to the LED systems that are coming out. They're great. I just it's like I, I just haven't seen any for less than five or six hundred bucks a panel that I would ever actually want to use. That's, that's just my it. problem. That's just it. My my per personal current. What's, what's the go to? Go to. Uh, I'm a huge fan of the Westcott uh, Flex Light. Uh, Westcott. Well, uh, you know, they've been around for years. They make uh, all kinds of lighting modifiers. They're probably best known for their Scrim Gym products, which are these like frame, uh, you know, aluminum frames that collapse down to nothing and they can, uh, you know, can use it for diffusion or reflectors. Oh, right. We used one of these on uh, on the video. We the, did. My movie, the serial movie. We used movie. two of them. Yep. Uh, I have a pair of those. Um, now, the good news is that the first generation of those uh, are still around and you can get them. I mean, I think when they were first announced, they were about five or 600 bucks a piece. And now I think they've, they've come almost down to half of that. I, I think for, for the, uh, Thanksgiving, you know, black Friday, B and H had the, the kit for, uh, for three or 400 bucks or something like that. Yeah. So that is definitely something you should put on your radar. Um, the downside to that light, uh, as awesome as it is, is it j tends to need a little bit of help as far as diffusion is concerned, uh, some sort of control, because it is very, it's a very harsh, hard light. It's the lighting thing for video and photo like this is such a tricky question because you can have a different answer for three different people who say superficially want the same results, yeah. but have different, you know, smaller considerations that, you know, you bring up later and you go, oh, well, I don't want to carry that much weight. Okay, yeah. well, then look towards LED. Oh, I want to shoot at high frame rates like Aaron's talking about. Right. Oh, well, then flicker is going to be a problem. Maybe right. you should go for a more constant light, like a, a tungsten thing where it's actually burning a, right. a filament. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a tough place. It, it's true. I mean, there's a, it, you're constantly having to to move, you know, to balance. Or spend $500 and get a three total light kit with some umbrellas and... Not even. What yeah. are those? Two hundred fifty watts. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. no, the more uh, the the standard Tota, like the little the yeah. classic one that, that they they're five hundred by default. They can go up to seven fifty, and I think you could, if you can, I think you can, might be able to find a two fifty. Go down to a yeah. But I think the yeah. standard is five hundred. Uh, the watts. thing I like about those is that they're small. Yes, they're hot and tricky, but like 
those are sort of built like little tanks they're, too. They're and, awesome, and I'm, yeah. I, you can get those on cheap. eBay for like a hundred bucks yeah. each, if not less. So there you uh, go. You can spend not a lot of money and get some total lights. Yeah, totas are great. Um, the the only town, the only thing to consider with them is uh, they are a little bit more difficult to control, yep. uh, and they get really hot. So yeah. uh, you got to be aware of that. It's <sighs> tough. Fortunately, as it comes to my general means, the majority of the models, in fact, that I'm working with are actually burlesque dancers. So by the end of the shoot anyway, they'll have stripped down. And so after the lights warm up, we'll just have them drop a couple layers. Well, there you go. That's like perfect for you. Then get some hot lights there. And I think that that works out in all their favor. Uh, yeah. I mean, the LED thing is great. I just, it's sort of a generation by generation thing, yeah. trying to get the right ones. We'll we'll put a link to the uh, the the guy who you were talking about who has the new CRI rating system. Yeah, that the British guy. Yeah. yeah, we'll find the link and put that in the show notes too but i hope we helped at least a little bit Aaron. no absolutely very much so in fact okay. i have a wonderful jumping off point to now actually go and figure out how to customize for myself excellent uh, thank you well let, sure. it, let us know how you come out in the end and, and hopefully we can maybe do a rehash i absolutely love to okay thank you so much Aaron. all right with that that that's i think that went pretty well there's a yeah. lot of a lot of options there I, you know it's hard to it's hard to get um you don't want to get too specific, but you don't want to be too general. And yeah. with, with when it comes to budget, um, it's it's a tough, you know, that's I'm, a tough answer. I'm looking towards, I'm looking forward to the day when the LED lighting thing it gets lighter and cheaper and better quality light, like where where you can actually buy a thousand dollar kit that's going to do everything you want it to do. I think you know? I think we're real close. Uh, yeah. I feel like we're we're in this sort of second major generation of that. Yeah. And when it hits the third major revision, which will probably be in another I don't know two, two three years. Yeah. Uh, we'll get there. Uh, because man, there's so much cool stuff coming out right now, but it's just it's just really expensive. Yeah. This week was really good questions. I, I just, uh, I guess we're going to find out in a week what we got, what we got coming up. It's going to, yeah, that's you know, half that's, the fun of this is not really knowing where we're going. <laughs> it's true. It, it's, it's, uh, it's up to our listeners. That's yeah. up to you guys. Yeah. So, uh, you know, you guys got to let us know what you want to know yeah. and we'll, uh, we'll go from there. Sounds good. We'll see you next week, Dan. Yep. All right. If you'd like to submit a question of your own, head over to askbillanddan.com where you'll also find our archive links and show notes, and details about supporting the show. You can also find us on Facebook and Twitter at Ask Bill and Dan.